Hello and welcome to another screencast on a Lightning Tools product. Um, this is the uh, screencast on the Lightning Tools data viewer web part, um, which has been around for a while but has recently undergone uh, some major improvements. Uh, first of all, what I want to show you in this screencast is how we can quickly and easily get to our data if you're using uh, Windows SharePoint Services or MOS Standard Edition. Um, Obviously, if you're using MOS Enterprise, then we would probably recommend that you uh, use the business data catalog in order to connect to your line of business data. But for those of you that don't have MOS Enterprise, uh, this is um, a valid option for, uh, for connecting to the data and uh, displaying it in a SharePoint web part. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here in order to connect is uh, follow the link to open up the tool pane. And once I've done that, you'll see that we have several options of data providers. Now we support SQL, Microsoft Access and Oracle. Um, we also support the, uh, the the Microsoft Access 2007 file extension, the ACCDB, as well as the uh, Microsoft Access 2003 and, and prior to that the, the MDB file. So I'm going to use the SQL data provider. Now we can do a similar thing to this using uh, Microsoft Office SharePoint Designer using the data viewer web part, but um, there is a couple of limitations to that, which is what we're hoping to uh, address here, and, and hopefully you'll be able to see how this web part is, is valuable to you. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, connect to my server, and that is known as Win2K3, that's the, the local host name, and then my instance name, which you may or may not have, is, is known as Office Servers. One Advantage over using our Lightning Tools data view web part is the fact that we can connect using the integrated security option. You can no longer do this using the data view web part in SharePoint Designer unless you configure single sign on. Um, so either you uh, change your SQL database to use um, mixed mode and, and pass through a username password, or you have to go through the lengthy process of, uh, of configuring single sign on. So one advantage of our web part is the fact that we can actually pass through the credentials of the currently logged on user to the database um, using integrated security. Now obviously if we don't want to do that then uh, obviously you, you can do the same as the data view web part and, and use a username and password. The databases that we wish to connect to, we have a uh, drop down list so you'll notice that I can choose the Northwind database as well as uh, other SQL databases here. And once I've selected the database, I can choose which object it is that I want to connect to. So I can uh, specify whether it's a table, a view, or a stored procedure that I'm going to connect to, and um, select each of those objects from the drop-down list. So I'm going to connect to, uh, in, in this instance, I'm going to connect to the products table from Northwind. For, for those of you who uh, have worked for, with Northwind for years, you'll be familiar with this. It has uh, product names, units in stock, unit prices, etc, etc. Uh, and I'm able to choose by clicking on this cog icon which of those columns I wish to display. So uh, I'm going to take the product ID, the product name, and I'm also going to take the uh, quantity per unit as well as the unit price, the units in stock, and the units on order. Now some of these column names are obviously um, uh, kept short for the, uh, the, the SQL environment so uh, it's possible for me to create a, a, a more useful uh, alias so uh, for example I, I can put in some spaces here which would be easier to read once it's inside the SharePoint web part and so on and once I've done that I'm able to specify the sort option so I particularly want to sort by uh, product name in ascending order uh, I don't really want to group by anything, but I have the option to group by any of these columns. And I can also specify the format. And this format column will display for anything that's a, a non-string. So, for example, the unit price, we can choose from a, a drop-down list of uh, formats. And if I choose something like currency, it's going to pick up from the um, SharePoint properties for this particular site and, and, and display the, the, the relevant symbol for that currency. I can also specify the order of the columns from left to right or right to left and a couple of other things that we are able to do on here um, I, I can specify the 
primary key. Now the reason why we would do that is when we're connecting two web parts together which I'm going to show you in another screencast. So we, we basically select the unique identifier for this and, and which value is going to be passed across to the consuming web part. We can also set up some aggregate functions. You'll notice um, we have a, again a drop down list of column names and if I was to go to um, something like units on order and I wanted to know how many units I'm expecting in then I could uh, perform a, a sum on that column and again display that in, uh, in in different formats if need be. Some new functionality to the data viewer web part is the fact that we can uh, not only read data now but we can also edit, delete and add data. Now, it's important to mention that this does depend on your permissions to the backend database so obviously if we're passing through credentials then you would need to have the relevant permission in the backend database to be able to edit items. Also, uh, you would need to be the owner of the site in order to be able to tick these options. So, um, you know, it's not something that would uh, really present a security risk. They should be used in caution, though. Um, obviously, uh, we're, we're not taking advantage of any um, validation rules or referential integrity that is, is based on the backend database. So expect uh, if you try to delete an item that has a, a referential integrity rule, it may be that you're unable to delete that item without deleting a, a child item first. So let me just demonstrate a couple of those. I'll, uh, I'll tick the option to show the edit button and also to show the delete buttons. And once I hit save and choose OK, we should be able to apply those options and you can see in the Lightning Tools Data Viewer web part we've uh, been presented with some data. OK, so all I need to do here is click on to OK and there's the, uh, the, the data that we're able to read sorted by product name and it's also taken the aliases across with the spaces in the name and so on as we uh, as we designed it and you're able to also navigate through the records using the uh, right and left arrow keys. Uh, to edit the data uh, we use the icons off to the left here so uh, you'll, you'll notice that the one with the red cross in it is the delete option, the one with the green tick is the edit. So uh, I'm able to um, select edit for this particular example and notice we're returning the uh, the product name char here. I may just want to change that to uh, something that we all understand and put T. And uh, I'm able to uh, cancel that change or accept that change. And that change is then written back to the database. You can see that it's now specified in a different order and we should find that under the letter T somewhere. Okay. So there's our T there. Let's explore some other options inside this web part. So if I go back to modify the shared web part, a couple of other things that you may want to do is filter that data. So um, th th there's two sections here that look similar. We've got the conditional formatting criteria, which I'm going to show you in another screencast. Uh, in this particular screencast, I'm going to demonstrate the, uh, the, the, the data filtering. So uh, I'm able to choose any column that is currently being displayed. So for example, if I wanted to see what products I do have on order, I can choose the units on order column and the greater than symbol and specify zero. So I want to show anything that basically is on order. And I'll, I'll click onto the uh, green plus to add that condition and then choose OK. And you can see that with um, everything that we're displaying now in the web part is a value greater than zero. And let's go back to modifying the shared web part again. And as I scroll down the, the list a little bit further, you'll notice some other advanced options. Now, uh, this is going to improve the performance um, by enabling data caching. It might be that uh, you've got hundreds of thousands of rows within your databases. We've only got really uh, a couple of hundred rows in this particular database, so performance is good anyway. Um, but what we might want to do, as long as that data doesn't change by the second, and we, you know, it's important that we have up to the second um, updates on the information, we may want to bring this down to, uh, let, let, let's go and query that database sort of um, 
every 120 seconds or, or something along those lines. So we can apply that and that will uh, improve the performance. Some of the other options that we have here are also the ability to um, specify how many records on the page we return uh, and also the alignment. So we can align the, uh, the, the columns off to the left or to the right or to justify them and so on. But anyway, that concludes the first screencast on the Lightning Tools Data Viewer web part. Make sure that you ha have a look at the other ones. We're going to take a look at how to connect two web parts together. And also we're going to uh, take a look at how we can apply the conditional formatting to the Data Viewer web part. So many thanks.